Hello and welcome back to the BSG Automotive channel. Today we're going to show you how to perform some basic but critical maintenance on your Mazda CX-9 and that is draining and filling your PTU or transfer case unit. Now the reason why this is so critical and you'll see why here in a second is number one there's no cooling for it, there's no external cooling. Okay, so this fluids is sitting in there baking right next to the transmission here, engine, and catalytic converter. So it's very, very important that you get in there and you change it out every 30,000 miles. The additive package in the fluid itself is going to break down after a while. So you want to get it out of there and keep it clean and refreshed so there's no bearing issues like some of the Fords are having. Same PTU. So you don't want to have that because the PTUs generally are not serviceable and they're about $1,000 a piece. So a little bit of fluid change uh, is good insurance. Let's get to it. Now the very first step is to jack the vehicle up nice and safe, put it on some jack stands right around right here on the pinch weld on both sides. So it's nice and safe to work underneath it. You preferably want to be working on a nice cool engine because it's tight up in here with the exhaust and the cat and everything else. Uh, but you don't want it to be real cold outside because we're not going to be able to get this thick fluid out of the PTU. So you come underneath the vehicle and you'll see why I'm going to put you up here on the side to get you a nice shot of this procedure. Yeah, it's buried in here. So here's the engine, transmission, and then here is the cat right there. So all of that's wrapped around the PTU and the fluid is just baking in there. Now you see that uh, fill plug right there? Well, there is no drain plug, so we're gonna be using the fill plug for draining and filling the PTU and changing this fluid out. And that is another reason why you wanna change it every 30,000 miles because we're not gonna be able to do a complete exchange, okay? So keeping it uh, up to date, you know, every 30,000 miles is good insurance. So I'm going to bring you up and over here to give you a better view of how to perform this procedure. Okay, so here's a good view of the PTU from the top. Uh, so you can see, this is me down below, getting to that drain plug, right there, that fill plug. Now what you wanna use is a regular 3 8 ratchet. It shouldn't be torqued down too much. We're gonna get it up in here, and we're gonna break torque on it, and we're gonna get it out of here, okay? And this will allow us to get our suction device up in here to suck out all the fluid inside. Now, once it gets you know loose enough like that, you generally, generally, uh, can reach up in here and just spin it off. Okay, like so. Now, make sure your drain pan is ready to go because it may spill out a little bit which it should, just like so, and that means it's full, okay? It should ooze out just a little bit like that. Now you'll see, let me see if I can get something there, you can kind of see it already, um, but this thing is just blacker and black, and it smells really bad. So let me get you down in here, see this, get you out of here, yeah. Look at that, that thing is freaking caked. Yeah. So at this point, it's not even collecting any many metal filings in there because it's so caked and covered. This is why you wanna be changing this out. It's not gonna do its job. The fluid's gonna break down and not be doing its job protecting the bearings and the gears in there. Uh, it's a good idea to always change it out. So let's see. Look at that, blacker than black, it's like tar. So from the bottom here, through this opening, we're going to put in our suction device deep down inside of here into the sump right there of the PTU. We're going to suck out as much fluid as possible. Patience is key here. This right here is a setup we're going to use to suck all that old fluid out of there. Now this is a professional unit from Capri. Um, for bleeding brakes, so it provides a lot of suction, but it's a little expensive. I'll link to this one and a cheaper model down below in the video description uh, so you guys can get your suction device to do this now and in the future, okay? So it's going to come with a nice silicone hose like this, 
And what you wanna do is get another section of hose. I think it's eighth inch and make it about eight, 10 inches long. And we'll stick that down past the gears into the sump of the PTU. And we'll be able to suck it out that way and fit it down in there. Now this is gonna require a lot of compressed air, so make sure you have a compressor on hand and it'll use the Venturi effect here to create a draw in a vacuum, okay? When this goes in there, it's gonna be hard to show you, we're gonna get it you know, deep down inside of there and we're gonna have to keep moving it around once it starts sucking dry inside of there to get the little pockets of fluid and get as much out as possible. And like I said, since this fluid is 75, 140, it's very thick. It's a small size tube to get down in there. So it's gonna take some time. So let's let it run and get it as clean, as empty as possible. Cool. All right, so this is probably the best angle we're gonna get to kind of show you this procedure. So I'll come up from the back side here where the drive shaft comes in and I'll start working it in as best you can from the top. And with this tube being, you know, 8, 10 inches or so, we're going to know how far down in we get it. Look at that. You see what I'm pulling out of there? Ugh. Anyways, kind of, oh man, this one's bad. It actually has like chunks of tar up in there. Oh man, see what I mean about the fluid breaking down? Ugh. So, we'll get it in here and we'll get it sucking and see what we pull out. All right, now once you've drained as much as you can out of the PTU, we can start the filling process. Now what I use is the Motorcraft 75140 because it's a really good rear axle lubricant um, that's specified for these. It's really good stuff. So what you wanna do is use one bottle of this and then we're gonna use a pump like this. I'll link to it down below. Makes it very easy to get it up into that hole in that tight area. Uh, without making too much of a mess. It's pretty cheap too. Uh, so let's go ahead and start the fill process. Now you may want to uh, fill it up, cap it off, drive it for a thousand miles or so, and then redo this procedure if yours is as bad as mine was. I mean, it's it was black, real thick and black inside of there. So we'll probably do this again, revisit this in about a thousand miles to get it back up to par. All right, now once you fill it enough, it'll start flowing out pretty good like this. Let it level out, give it a couple minutes. In the meantime, we can come down here and make sure our fill plug slash drain plug is free of all those metal filings and stuff like that. And then of course, put a new bead of sealant around the outside edge there. Get it ready to go back in. Now going back together, we'll use our cleaned up fill plug with the sealant on it. And it's best to come up over the top here and down to that fill plug, that fill hole, because otherwise it's gonna be impossible to get at it from down in here. It's really hard to be using two little fingers trying to do it. So let's do it from the top and get the thread started on there. And then from down below, we can get our ratchet back up in here and get it going once you line it up there. It's just really tight in here. So again, I'll hold it so we can get started. And you want to make sure that you only tighten this so much. I mean, really restrict yourself because it, remember, it's just a fill plug. You don't want to crack the case. So let's kind of tighten it till it's snug and that's it. The sealant will do the rest, okay? There we go. Now once it's capped off like that, we can go ahead and spray the area with some brake clean and wash all this stuff off. 